most games will not ever be reprinted and, with major ROM websites, phasing down the legal teams of large game companies, game preservationists argue that the current state of commercial video game preservation is abysmal. But there's something you can do, no matter your profession, to make sure video game history is not lost to the sands of time, explains Digital Eclipse's Frank Foldy in his talk on game preservation from ED 2019. Sifadi offers general advice on how to contribute to the preservation of video game history, as well as tips for developers looking to reprint classic games on how to ensure that those reprinted titles best represent their original releases. In addition to this presentation, THEDDC Vault and its accompanying YouTube channel offers numerous other free videos, audio recordings, and slides from many of the recent game developers' conference events, and the service offers even more members-only content for DD Vault subscribers. Those who purchased all access passes to recent events, like DD, a uh, vertical already have full access to DD Vault, and interested parties can apply for the individual subscription via DD Vault subscription page. Group subscriptions are also available. Game-related schools and development studios who sign up for DD Vault Studio subscriptions can receive access for their entire office or company by contacting staff via the HGDC Vault Group subscription page. Finally, current subscribers with access issues can contact DD Vault Technical Support, Newsbrief. Rocket League is the latest game to be added into the PlayStation Crossplay Bait program, an addition that comes after years of Sony's reluctance to offer the feature to multiplayer games. Players do have the option to toggle cross-platform play on or off from Rocket League's gameplay settings, but the feature is flipped on by default. Sionic's rocket-powered spin on soccer. It's just one of several games that have offered limited cross-platform play for some time, in large part due to the fact that Sony was reluctant to let players on the PlayStation 4 team up with a match against those on competing consoles. The company changed its tone recently and openly admitted that it took a little too long to make that decision, first allowing Epic Games, Fortnite, to let its PlayStation 4 players compete and team up with friends on X1 and Nintendo Switch, before slowly opening the feature up to other developers. Newsbrief, Runner Deck, the developer behind the car digital published game Bomber Crew, has been acquired by Cat Alice, Curve Digital's parent company. The deal comes a year and a half after the release of Bomber Crew, and as Runner Deck has two more games in the series in development. In a statement, Catalyst CEO Dominic Wheatley says that this prior relationship helped pave the way to the recent acquisition as well. A press release notes that the acquisition was a cash and shares deal, but does not offer details on the terms of the arrangement aside from that. But, with that deal signed, Renner Deck joins the publisher Cord Digital, testing on the support service provider Testronic, and developer Kuju as Catalyst subsidiaries. Wheatley also says that Renner Deck is just the first of several acquisitions the company hopes to complete in the next year with the goal of continuing to build up Catalyst as a prominent game company in the United Kingdom. He notes that the company is currently chasing some leads, but is also actively interested in talking to developers that might be interested in joining the company. This interview is part of our Road to Reef series. You can find the rest by clicking here. If the reel takes the player through a complex puzzle field place with outwards, teaching them through its colorful visuals peaceful goals, and thoughtful mechanisms.
Gamma Sutras spoke with Nikol uh? as Rakhbaranantam uh? as Baptist of Nonsense Arts. Developers of the excellence in article nominated Ethereal to learn more about how the game's quiet sound design came to be, how this move away from music helped strengthen the game's mood, and the challenges and benefits the developers saw in creating difficult puzzles without a single word to direct the player. Rakhbarin with a nonsense arts, the team behind Ethereal. Composed by Nicole uh, as Rakhbarin, myself, and Top uh, as Batista. I am in charge of coding, art and game design, and Lily Mendoza, Argentina. Batista is the sound designer and musician, and lives in Lot Lot of Buenos Aires. He is from Tierra del Fuego, the southernmost city of South America. I am an information systems engineer, and for the past six years, I have been making games for game times and other little games just for fun. A couple of years ago, I started making games for a living with freelance gigs and developing bigger projects such as Ethereal. But just I always played video games and music. My main instrument is the drums. It felt natural to me to combine the two worlds together. Around 2011, I started meeting other local devs and started making small games for jams and mobile. Kindle like Rakhbarin, I slowly moved into freelance jobs as we were developing Ethereal. Rakhbarin once I was making new prototypes. I was very interested in games that had their own set of universal rules. Of course, every game is created around its own rules, and that makes it unique. But most games share a lot of their universal ones, for example, gravity in platformers. So, the concept of Ethereal was born around the idea of creating a world where things worked in a way that only makes sense there. Rekabaran the game was developed with Unity. Uncoded in C Pound Kit using Visual Studio. Most of its visuals are result of shaders over shaders. But there are a couple of graphics assets made with Photoshop. But just on my main audio software is Logic Pro. I could marry that piece of software. I love it. I used my code Minolog to generate a bunch of the sound effects and further music in certain instances during my project. The Omnisphere was super helpful. For the ambient sounds, I used Paul Stretch. That is a granular, free software, and it's awesome. Rekabarin time constraints, having limited lives and other kind of pressures, in my opinion, can be used in a game not only as a rule, but also as a narrative resource. In a way, we are using the luck of this to communicate more about the Surroundings the world where the game happens. The fact that you will not be harmed by anything is very meaningful. As much as the fact that you are going to stay the same if you do nothing. This aspect has a lot of impact in the game overall. The way the player tackles a puzzle game without these pressures is very different from one that has them. In this scenario, you are allowed to explore to try different things. You are not afraid of failure of any kind. Also, this kind of experience is naturally more quiet and relaxing. So we have to represent that on both visual and audio fronts, which is why the aesthetic is very chill and meditative. Recapturing the main aspect that pointed us in that direction was the elegance that self-explanatory things maintain. We have felt, from many years playing puzzle games, that the ones that had less explanations are the more relevant, not necessarily the best ones, but the cleaner ones. Also, we wanted to share our game with the world. And, as we know, there are a lot of different languages and most people speak Kali. That's not our own. We are from Argentina. So, we speak Spanish. We thought that we should try as hard as we could to avoid this barrier between us and the player. 
If we design something that the player could understand without words, or with very few amount of words, it would probably reach more people from more different and diverse cultures. Rekabaran, if we are not going to use words, we have to use every other means available, visuals and sound. That's why we try to give as much feedback as we can with everything that is happening within the game. Because there's not going to be a fairy following you at every step, telling you what you should do next. But just uh, I think the visual representation of the mechanics are a good example. Record Bar did a very interesting job representing what each one of them does in a very minimalistic way.